Okay, good morning and welcome to the School of Biomedical Sciences webinar. Um, I'm going to begin by introducing you to the panel um, and uh, then we will begin with a short introduction to uh, Newcastle and to the programmes that we offer here. Uh, and then it'll be over to you to um, put in your questions and we'll do our best to answer them. So my name is Debbie Bevitt and I'm the Head of School of Biomedical Sciences uh, and I'll pass you over now to Andy. Hello, my name is Andy Knight and I'm the Admissions Tutor for Biomedical Sciences. Nathan? Hi, I'm Nathan and I'm a third year MSI student on the Biomed course. Hi, and I'm Nick Morris and I'm a Director of Undergraduate International Studies. Okay, so we'll begin now with a short presentation. It'll just take a moment for that to come up on the screen, so bear with us. Okay. So, as you can see on, on the first uh, slide here, a few images from around the region. Uh, so here we have the Angel of the North, which is an iconic um, statue just outside Newcastle. And here you can see the red brick buildings of the older part of the university. And this is a famous bridge over the River Tyne and the Sage Concert Hall uh, down on the River Tyne. Uh, so these are just a few um, scenes from around Newcastle if you haven't been here before. Um, you can see here an aerial photograph of Newcastle and it gives you an idea of the scale of the city. It's a relatively compact city um, and that's great because it means that you can walk from one side to the other in about 20 minutes. It's very easy to get around either on foot or by bicycle or using the public transport. So we have great public transport buses and, and a metro system as well. Um, the medical school is located here, just on the edge of this green town moor area. Um, and um, pretty much all of the teaching that you would um, have while you're on the course would be in, in this area here. You can see here as a, the, the River Tyne that I mentioned earlier and the famous bridges and the Sage uh, concert venue that I mentioned earlier. And also if you're into your football, this is St James's Park where you can go and watch Newcastle United playing. So this is a list of the programmes that we offer in the school. We have three year BSc programmes in biomedical genetics, biochemistry, pharmacology, physiolo physiological sciences and biomedical sciences. And we also offer four year MSci programmes in biomedical sciences, biomedical genetics and biochemistry. So for those of you who are already holding offers with us, you will um, be holding offers for one of these uh, programmes or for our deferred medical sciences option. All of these uh, programmes are also avail available to you with a professional placement year. So if you were interested in taking a placement year between your second and third year, um, we would help you to find a placement. Uh, and then once you find a placement, we would switch you to the degree programme with professional placement year. So for example, your degree certificate would then be biochemistry with professional placement year. <coughs> um, the MSI programme, you can take a professional placement year on that prog those programmes as well, and that can be between your second and third or your third and fourth year. This slide just shows the overview of the structure of our programmes, uh, and you can see it's largely divided into two phases. So during the first year, uh, and that makes up phase one, all of the students on the courses that I've mentioned are taught together in, in, one, uh, in one group. So you cover a common curriculum in your first year. In the first semester, you study genetics, biochemistry and cell biology. And in the second semester, you study physiology, pharmacology and microbiology with immunology. So you get a flavour for all of the different subjects that are available to you. You also study two practical skills modules that run across the first and second semester. At the end of your first year, you have the option to swap. So this is, it gives you a lot of flexibility. It means that if you've arrived um, on the biomedical sciences programme, for example, and then decide that what you really fancy doing is pharmacology, you can just swap to a different programme at the end of the first year. You then start to specialise uh, with a, one specialised module in semester one. The remaining modules are shared uh, still in semester one of the second year. 
and thereafter you split into different degree programs studying degree specific modules uh, and then you finish up with a 10 week full time research project in the final semester if you're on a third year course, three year course. For those who go on to the MSI, there's a fourth year, which is um, split between um, master's level modules and an extended final year project. So this slide shows um, that the majority of teaching uh, that goes on in our programmes is delivered by our colleagues who are based in the research institutes in the medical faculty. Um, and you can see that there are a, a variety of institutes um, specialising in different areas of research. So, for example, the Institute of Neuroscience, the Institute of Genetic Medicine um, and the Institute of Cancer Research here, the Northern Institute of Cancer Research. Um, so in these institutes, we have world class uh, researchers um, all at the top of their of their field. And these are the people who will be actually teaching you, particularly in the second and third uh, years of your programme and, and the fourth year if you're on an MSI programme. There are lots of opportunities for you to do things beyond your um, studies as well, uh, and we encourage you to do that and give you plenty of support to find those opportunities. I've already mentioned the uh, opportunity of finding a professional placement year, um, and that's facilitated by a member of academic staff who acts as a placement advisor. And we also have strong links to the careers service to help you find those placements. Some students decide they don't want to take a full year out, but want to take a shorter um, placement. And they do that over their, vac their vacation, usually between second and third year. Um, and the placements in that case are usually for about six to eight weeks, um, often based in the research institutes here in Newcastle. But some students go and do those placements in industry or in other universities. There's an opportunity to go and study overseas uh, on our biomedical sciences programme. You can do your second semester of your second year at Monash in Australia or at our new med campus in Malaysia. And we also have exchange opportunities for your final year project uh, into Europe, uh, for example, Barcelona uh, in Spain and Toulouse in France. And then finally, we have the Newcastle work experience placements, and these are um, coordinated by the university uh, and allow you to work on short projects uh, across the university. So there are many opportunities, as you can see, for adding value to your CV while you're here. And if you want to find out more about the other opportunities available, you can um, see those on our website. We do um, a lot to support you developing uh, your skills to become employable uh, when you graduate. Uh, so, for example, your final year research project can be tailored to your career interests. Most of our students take their project in a research laboratory in one of our research in institutes. Uh, but some, for example, do clinical audits or computer based projects or perhaps education based projects if you're interested in going into teaching. And we also offer a range of optional modules in the third year, again, helping you to tailor your studies towards your uh, final career interests. So if you're interested in a career in uh, science media, for example, you might want to take our science communication module. Or if you're interested in a career uh, handling the big data that's now um, acquired in biological research, then the bioinformatics uh, module might be the one for you. And you can find Find out more about what our students do uh, by having a look at the profiles that are available on our website. So that's a quick overview of our programmes. Um, just to summarise, why might you want to choose to come to Newcastle? Well, firstly, we do believe that we offer our students an excellent experience and um, that's backed up by our NSS scores. Uh, where we consistently score over 90% uh, uh, of our students telling us that they're satisfied or very satisfied with the experience that they have had here at Newcastle. You have a, a wide choice of degree programmes and you can switch between them. And there is an option to transfer to medicine uh, or dentistry at the end of the uh, first year, uh, which is a competitive option, but we can tell you more about that if you're interested. We offer high quality research led teaching uh, and high graduate employability and we give you plenty of practical experience to help you find that uh, that job when you graduate. 
And overall, it's a really great city to live in. And I think we have some very happy students. <laughs> I hope Nathan's going to back me up on that one. So that's everything I'm going to say. Um, and we're going to open uh, it out now to your questions. Okay, fantastic, thank you. So the first question we've got is, um, can students decide to take the MSI once they've already started the three year programme? Okay, shall I start with that one then? Um, so the answer is yes, you can switch between the MSI and the BSc programmes um, when you get here. So you don't need to make your mind up at the point of application. Um, and you can switch between the BSc and the MSI programmes until the end of your second year. Um, so there's plenty of flexibility in that. And when you arrive, we will give you uh, advice and support as to which is the best choice for you. Can, can I just add in there that though for international students, it's not possible to move from the M side down to uh, to a Bachelor of Science oh, program point, because yeah. of the visa, actually. So yeah. you need do need to be aware of that um, slight wrinkle to that. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Fantastic. We've had a few questions as well about the medicine transfer. So could you just explain, please, how the medicine transfer works? OK. And did yeah, you I can answer that. that. <clears throat> so based on the medicine transfer, all of our students who come onto our program are eligible to apply for the medicine transfer and that's through to the medical school the MBBS program and so there are several requirements that you need to to make an application and to be successful you basically need to have a valid UK CAT you need to have a average score in your first year biomedical sciences exams of 75 percent if you meet those criteria then you may be lucky and be selected for an interview from the medical program and then they will select the successful students. And as Debbie mentioned before, it's really important to make you aware at this point that while it is possible to transfer into medicine, it is very, very competitive. And normally the medical school will allow between six and 10 students to transfer from our program into the MPBS. Fantastic. Um, and one student would like to know what happens if they don't quite get their grades on results day? OK, I think as the admissions tutor, that's part of my my job. What I do to the, the applications who don't quite make the grades is I basically select the students and rank them in order of the grades that they have achieved. By and large, most students who miss their uh, offer by a grade, for example, normally get in. Then what I then do is just rank everybody and decide have they put us down as their firm choice or their insurance choice. I tend to prefer applicants who have put us down as their first choice because I think those people really want to come here. So I tend to look at those first. Okay, and we've got a question here about accommodation. So Ella would like to live close to her lectures and was looking for some advice on which accommodation to choose. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Nathan, our student, <laughs> although Nathan lives locally, but you yeah. presumably know a bit about accommodation yeah. from your friends, yeah? Pretty much all of the accommodation available in Newcastle is quite close to campus. None of them are more than a 10 or 15 minute walk, but there are some that are right outside the university, outside the medical school, basically. But any accommodation you choose, you'd be able to go to the medical school mm -hmm. quite quickly. The closest, actually, is Parkview. It's uh, yeah. about a two minute walk and that's opening this September brand new accommodation. Looks very nice indeed. Yeah, it's just around the back mm -hmm. of the medical school, isn't it? So. Or Park Terrace is also. Yeah, Park yeah. Terrace is just down. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a question as well if uh, students have the opportunity to study at the campus in Malaysia. Yes, yeah, so if you're on the Biomedical Sciences programme, um, then you have the opportunity to take the second semester of your second year uh, out at the New Med campus. Um, so we teach exactly the same program out at New Med. So it means that you can study the same modules, you take the same exams while you're there, but you have the experience of going and studying and living in another country. Um, we've got a question about careers as well. So um, this student would like to know about biomedical genetics um, and what the employability is like for the biomedical genetics program. Okay, Nick, do you want to take that one? Um, yes, I mean, I don't actually have any information that is just biomedical genetics. We do a six month survey after our students have graduated and look at uh, their employability and what, what they've gone into. Typically about 95%, 90 to 95% of our students at that stage are either in graduate entry employment or are studying a further degree. Um, I, I call it my 40, 30, 20, 10 rule. 
roughly 40% of our students go into graduate entry level jobs, management level, maybe working in the biotech industry or pharmacology, uh, pharma industry as a bench scientist, maybe into sales in medicine, things of that area. About 30% of our students will go on to do further uh, courses, masters, PhDs, teacher training. 20% do roughly a very interesting sort of mix of things where they're doing sort of what I call work training, where they may be working for an accountancy firm and picking up account, accountancy training or a law firm, or they may be working in the banking industry. And then we have just a few left who are sort of waiting for courses to start. So it's very good employability. The thing is with the science degree, it keeps your options open. Our students go into a great range of different subjects and different careers um, once they leave us. I think I can add in as well that the thing that is really important to note is that there is no difference potentially in the type of degree you do, the genetics, the biochemistry and biomed in your employability. So all our students from all the different programs have equally successful outcomes and get the jobs like, like Nick mm. just mentioned. Thank you. So we've got a question for Nathan here. And um, so Ella would like to know why you chose to study at Newcastle University. Um, for me personally, I was interested in the research side of things and because Newcastle is such a world leader in research, that was what interested me. And in particular, I was interested in neuroscience and Newcastle's neuroscience department is one of the world leaders with some world leading researchers. So that was what attracted me to Newcastle. Um, and another student would like to know what the lab facilities are like. Okay, so the teaching labs, we have four teaching labs, um, each of which hold up to 100 students. We're just doing a major development on uh, two of our teaching labs. Uh, so we're investing 1.3 million in a refurbishment that's happening, uh, actually just starting next week. Um, so by uh, entry of uh, September this year, that refurbishment will be completed. So that should be pretty much a state of the art teaching laboratory. Um, the other lab facilities that are available are for final year projects uh, and those are the research labs in the research institutes. Uh, again, these are world class research laboratories um, and you get the opportunity to work in those and use equipment that you wouldn't otherwise be able to, uh, to experience working with. Fantastic. Um, another question for Nathan here. So um, are you friends with lots of people from your course? <laughs> Yeah, I'm friends with quite a lot of people from our course. You tend to make friends, particularly in your labs and your seminars in the first year, because they're smaller groups. Obviously, in lectures, it's a much bigger group. It's a bit harder to make friends in there. But you will tend to make a lot of friends from the course and also from your accommodation if you're staying in student halls. And there's a few questions coming through about the uh, professional placement year. So one student would like to know if they can do this overseas and another student would like to know if you help people find placements. OK, I'll pick that one up. Um, so can you do it overseas? The answer is um, there's no reason why not, although I can't think of a student so far who has done their placement overseas, but um, it sh certainly should be possible. Um, and yes, we do give plenty of support for you finding those placements. So we have uh, a member of academic staff who's our placement uh, advisor. Uh, and that person will begin to talk to you really from the end of first year about how to go about finding placements, building up your CVs so that you're competitive for finding those placements. Uh, and then in the second year, uh, we'll be guiding you through that process, letting you know when job advertisements uh, are, are live, uh, helping you put that CV together, doing mock interviews uh, and so on. Uh, so that by the time you come to those selection interviews, you are in a really good position to apply for those placements. Um, yeah. I think that answers it. Um, there's one for Nick here, I think. So we've got an international student who is still choosing between the UK and some American universities, and they'd like to know why they should choose the UK and Newcastle. Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, it kind of depends on what sort of course you're looking for and the sort of American university that you could be going to. Um, the only experience I have of the, the American education system is I did spend five years working in an Ivy League college over there and it was a very much a liberal arts college so they, they tended to study a much wider area of material and then focus down with their major in their uh, final year and it, ten, and it was a four-year program there. I don't know exactly what other American universities offer. Now at Newcastle we tend to focus in 
uh, at an earlier stage. It's a three-year program, Bachelor of Science with Honours or the four-year integrated Masters. And we're very much focusing early in on the specifics of your subjects of choice. We don't have this idea really of majors, although you could argue our first year is a sort of um, opening year, a starting year where you're not focused and specialised to such an extent. So I would say that's the key thing. What I would also say is that Newcastle is a very friendly city and we're right in the city centre. We're not sort of stuck out in the middle of nowhere. So you don't have to have a car to get around, for example. So it's easier to move around the city. It's very easy to get around the country as well. So I would I would say they're the key points. We, we focus earlier, or we tend to focus earlier on the uh, degree program. Uh, we don't offer the sort of broad education with the major type approach that they offer at the American universities. Has anybody else studied in America, worked over there? Got... No, I haven't. No, no. Yeah. so that, that's, that, that's my own view of it, anyway. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and can international students do the transfer to medicine after year one? Yes. Great, thank you. <laughs> There's Simple another answer. student um, who is moving from London and they're a little bit nervous about relocating. They would like to know about the support for the first few weeks to help them settle in. Okay. Nathan, do you want to, can yeah. you remember that far back to your <laughs> first week here? Um, you do get a lot of support all the way through the university, but particularly at the start of the year, you've got Freshers Week, which will help you to make friends. So you'll have a support network of friends who you've made in that week. But then you've also got a tutor who will be an academic in the school, as well as a peer mentor who will be a student in the second or third year. You can direct questions to all of them at any point in the first couple of weeks. And you also know where all of the senior members of staff are. They're all in <coughs> one corridor in the medical school. So if you have any questions in particular for them, you can also go and see them at any point. But in terms of settling in and moving to a new area, you'll make friends very quickly. And there's a lot of support from basically all areas of the university. There's also student welfare as well. So if you have any problems in general, you can speak to them as well at the university. And just following up on that, I think from my understanding is that the peer mentor system is really good, that you'll basically be contacted by our peer mentor almost straight away once you've been accepted on the offer on the on the course. So that even before you come here, you can start to talk to people about what it's like to be at Newcastle. Yeah, and you'll meet with your peer mentor in the first week and get to know them. So if, mm. if you've got any questions early on, then they're a good point of contact. Fantastic, thank you. Um, another student would like to know what, accre what accreditation the course has. OK, so all of our courses are accredited with the Royal Society of Biology. Um, so our BSc courses have standard accreditation uh, with the RSOB and our MSci courses have the advanced accreditation. Uh, and that accreditation really is a recognition of the quality of the research led teaching and the research uh, project that you do uh, in your final year. That's what really sets those accredited programmes apart from from other programmes in the country. Fantastic, thank you. Um, another question, um, the student knows that Newcastle is famous for their research. What's the most impressive bit of research that's being conducted at Newcastle at the moment? Mm. Mm, that's a good question. I think we probably all have a different... All of our favourites, <laughs> don't we? Yes. Yeah. So I'm an, I'm an immunologist by training and I think the immunology at Newcastle is outstanding at the moment and in particular they have a very good system at Newcastle where people whose immune systems have gone wrong come to Newcastle and they, they do a lot of groundbreaking research and save lives, basically. Lots of babies with no immune system come to Newcastle and through the result of the research, they save the lives of those babies. So I think that's pretty impressive. Okay. Nick, do you want to pick a favourite? I like the three parent baby uh -huh. one because that... <laughs> you beat that, me to it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that, that one's great because it when you mention it to people, they give you a very blank look quite often because three parents, one baby, how does that work? It's basically, it's work that our uh, research in uh, the neurosciences area has been involved in. The, we've got a very strong mitochondrial research group here. And a lot of their work they've been doing is on mitochondrial disease. You inherit your mitochondria just from your mother. The father uh, sperm doesn't really contribute very much at all, sort of 0.001%. The mitochondria carry with them uh, mitochondrial DNA. So if you have a mutation in that that leads to disease, then you've got the problem that the baby will inherit that. And those diseases can be very severe because they impact high energy tissues such as muscle and brain. And the work that's been in uh, the Newcastle has been involved with is developing techniques and coming up with the approaches where they can take an egg from a healthy donor, remove the nucleus, 
put in the nucleus from an egg from a woman who carries mitochondrial disease and then bring in the sperm to make the fetus. So I, that's the stuff that I, I think is uh, pretty uh, cool research that's going on here at the moment. And it's led to a change in the law in the UK. Yes, right? led to a change in law. As I say, it's the, when you mention three parent babies, <laughs> the look you get on people's faces is really quite good. <laughs> Okay. And I'll add my favourite, which is the diabetes research that's, uh, that goes on here at Newcastle. So obviously, um, I'm sure you're aware that diabetes is an increasing problem in the UK, but across the, across the world. Uh, and there's been some very interesting work done here about how it's possible to reverse type 2 diabetes by uh, giving patients a very uh, calorie restricted diet. Uh, so it's a really interesting approach to dealing with this really um, global problem. Thank you. Um, there's another question here about how many teaching hours and lab work hours are there per week? Pass that over to Nathan so you know that you're hearing the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember what they were in first year, the exact hours, but you tend to have quite a few lectures a week and in first year you have three hour labs and those will be once every couple of weeks and you'll also have seminars which are once every couple of weeks as well. Um, I think it's 14 hours as a lecture. It's about 10-12 yeah. hours, yeah. 10, 12 yeah. hours 10, 12 of lectures. Hours a week, yeah. Yeah. And then um, as you go on in your second year, your labs become six hours long and you have them less frequently. And in your third year, you don't have labs because obviously you've got your research project towards the end of that year. And seminars become less frequent over the years as well. But uh, throughout the year, I would suggest you get used to the idea that there is going to be stuff every day. So we get our students in to do things every day. Yeah, and you are expected to work nine till five as well to catch up on lectures and go over all the work that you've been given as well. Thank you. Uh, Nathan, there's another question here for you. This student would like to know what your plan is for the future and what you hope to do when you graduate. <laughs> well, I'm on the MSI course, so next year I'll be going on to do the fourth year of this course. And then after that, I'm looking at potentially going into research, but I'm not 100% sure yet. At the minute, I would like to go into something in dementia research, but it's still a ways off yet. <laughs> Do you want to say a little bit about your, you did a lab assistant job, did you? Um, yes, yeah, so in my yeah. second year I worked as a lab assistant in one of the genetics labs and that's basically during term time you fit it around your timetable, you pick when you work and it's a paid position where you help a researcher in the lab and it can range from basically different things depending on which lab you're in. You get a list of all the labs offering the position and then you apply to the one that you would like to do and you're interviewed for it and then go on and work in the lab basically whenever you're free. And what was your research project about? You've just finished it, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, I've just finished my research project and my research project was in the Institute of Neuroscience and it was on dementia with Lewy bodies. So I was using a mouse model of dementia with Lewy bodies to see if there are any changes in the mouse's brain earlier on in its life before it's shown symptoms of dementia. Yeah. And I was using electrophysiology techniques and immune histochemistry, immune histochemistry techniques, which obviously I haven't experienced through the course because they're quite advanced techniques using quite advanced equipment. Great, thank you. Thank you. There's another question about the future as well. So this student would like to know if they can work in a healthcare setting, such as a lab, after they've graduated. Andy? Do you yes, I think lots of our students do that. That's a common sort of route, if you like. And so there are different types of labs. So you can either go into laboratories in a sort of research institute or in a, in a university. Lots of students also go into the NHS. That's another possibility where you might go into diagnostic type laboratories. Or some students will go into pharmaceutical companies, for example, and they will have research laboratories. So labs are a very common destination for our students. And as part of understanding that, that is why we spend a lot of our time teaching students how to do experiments, how to use equipment, and then how to design projects and understand the data that you get from research experiments. Thank you. Another student would like to know if the course offers study abroad opportunities in South America. Ooh. Uh, not at the moment is the answer. Um, however, we're introducing uh, another option uh, where you can take a year out between your second and third year to study at an overseas university uh, if you wish to do that. Now, at the moment, we don't have links in South America, um, but um, we're always expanding the um, links that we have. So uh, it's certainly not out of the question if that was something that you were particularly interested in that we could that we could explore at the moment. I don't think we have that. No. no. Thank you. Um, a question about the social life for Nathan. So what's it like in the night out? Is it safe <laughs> to do? 
Um, well, the nightlife in Newcastle is really, really good. And in terms of safety, it's a very safe city. As Nick said, it's a very friendly city as well. People tend to get on really well. But night out, it's a really good nightlife. And drinks do tend to be quite cheap in Newcastle, which people quite like. <laughs> Great. And another student would like to know when the course starts and if they need to do any preparation or reading before they start. OK, Andy. Uh, the second is no, you don't need to do any preparation reading. We really stress that when students come in in early October, which is when the course starts. Basically, in the first year, as we have a variety of uh, different students coming in with different qualifications and different backgrounds, a lot of international students. We spend a lot of time in the first year sort of getting everyone up to the same level. And so therefore we completely take into account that difference. And so we say have a really good holiday after your exams in the summer and come refreshed for the first year. Another student would like to know what student support is available to them. Okay, so um, Nathan's already picked up on some of the uh, support that's available when you first get here to help you uh, integrate into the university. So that's things like your peer mentor. Um, and um, he mentioned your personal tutor. So I could probably just tell you a bit more about that. So your personal tutor is a member of academic staff uh, who will be your main point of contact during your three or four year programme. Um, and you meet with them uh, once in the first four weeks of you getting here. Uh, you should then meet with them again during that first semester and thereafter you'll be offered a meeting uh, once a semester for the rest of your course. Um, now you can go and see them more often if, if you'd like to and we're always very happy to, to meet with our tutees but it means that you've got that person to go to uh, if you need any guidance on um, let's say how to revise for your exams, um, thinking about your future career plans. If you need references for job applications, then your tutor would be the person that you go to. Um, there's also plenty of support, as Nathan mentioned, um, centrally in our student wellbeing service. So they provide support for uh, financial advice. Uh, if you have a seen or unseen disability, then there's a, a team there who will um, work with you to produce a recommendation that is then provided to the school so that we know what sort of adjustments we need to make to ensure that you can be successful in your studies. Uh, and then in addition to finance and disability team, there's also the um, counselling and, and mental ha health team there as well who can support you if you're having difficulties uh, in those areas. Um, have I missed anything for support? Um, there's the career service as career well. Career service, good idea, yeah. With any work experience or with what you can do after your degree as well. Um, so Nathan, another question uh, for you. Uh, this student would like to know what you did during Freshers Week. I heard there's lots to do during the day. What activities did you take part in? Wow, that was a long time ago now. <laughs> <laughs> there are basically a lot of activities offered on a night and during the day throughout the whole of Freshers Week. I think I did paintballing one day online. There's a lot of like night outs as well, but there's a lot of going for meals with different people as well, like big groups going out for meals. Other activities, I think go-karting was on one day as well all sorts of different things really and there's a lot of things towards the start of the year where you can try different societies as well Newcastle has a massive variety of societies so there's bound to be something there as well that you can try out like I think we've got a snowboarding society as well but there's all sorts of different things available. They also do something similar for sport don't they they have a sort yeah. of mm -hmm. a try it so if you have if you've got a sport that you've always wanted to try but thought well it's too expensive to just give it a go they have a scheme for that as well so there's loads of stuff going on yeah and pretty much any sport you could imagine mm -hmm. has a society in newcastle mm -hmm. for you to try out so well this is quite related actually the next question is what are the sporting facilities like at newcastle okay uh well we have a, a big sports center that's right next door to the medical school uh, and again that's just undergoing a major expansion expansion uh, which is due to be completed in 2019 um, so there's um, plenty of facilities there in terms of, well, Nathan, have you been in the sports centre? There's Only racket briefly. sports, there's, there's gym, there's strength and conditioning suite, there's going to be squash courts, um, or everything that you would expect in a, in a, in a high quality sports centre. Yeah, the gym's basically right outside the medical school yeah. and you do get offers through the university of quite cheap gym membership as well. Quite easy. OK, uh, last question. Um, so what can I expect as a new student in Newcastle? What can you expect as a new student? 
I think you can expect to have a great time. I think you can expect to be well looked after when you arrive. Um, as a new student, um, I think you can expect that we will um, take our time to introduce you to the programme. So we have an induction week where you'll have talks to come along to and, and find out what to expect of, of the programme. Um, and as Nathan's already mentioned, quite a lot of social activities going on in that first week as well. Um, and I think you can expect a, an, an interesting course. Um, we, we don't throw you in at the deep end. Um, a lot of what you do in the first semester and indeed the first year is, is going over some of the things that you did at A level or whatever qualifications you've done before coming here, just to make sure that everybody gets up to the same, the same speed. Um, so first year um, shouldn't be too daunting. Would no, you agree, and, Nathan? Uh, you are eased into the course, really. It does build up as it goes on, so you won't kind of just be straight in and be stressed straight away. <laughs> you do get eased in, you get to try all the different assessments as well in your first year. You'll have like essays that'll help you to develop your writing technique, for example. So yeah, you're really eased in. It's a very friendly environment and there's a lot of support. I think another thing that I've seen from the admissions point of view, I think you can expect to see and to meet and become friends with lots of different types of people, people from different countries, people who've done A-levels, people who've done IB, people who've come in through access qualifications, for example, so they might be slightly older. So you get a really good mix of different people with different interests and potentially meeting people that you may never have thought about meeting before. Okay. Thank you. I think that's all of the questions. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and if you do have any other questions that occur to you after we finish the webinar, uh, please do feel free to drop us a line um, and our email details are um, available, I hope, at the end of this uh, presentation, uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>